All right, what's going on, everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video, doing a follow up video about this Last of Us Part One remake debacle. So last night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, completely bizarre, um, which tells you a lot, uh, PlayStation decided to drop the uh, a blog post on the PlayStation blog and a video called The Last of Us Part One, rebuilt for the PS5 features and gameplay trailer. I, I it's, it, it looked bad, bro. It looked bad. It looked, I'm not talking about the game. The game itself looks great. What looks bad is releasing this trailer and this blog post looked completely reactionary, right? And it looked like damage control. Not to say that I don't believe the things said in these in the trailer for the most part, shown in the trailer. I mean, I don't debate things that are shown to me um, or the things said in the blog post. I agree with everything except for like one one thing, which I'm going to get to. But it looks like and damage control can be true. But damage control is just trying to save face, trying to mitigate damage of a reputation or image that has already been done. When the fact is, if you just released this trailer earlier, a while ago, when it's like a month ago, and this blog post a month ago, there would be no damage control to be done because you would have established exactly what this is and you wouldn't have to worry about a leaker or anything like that. Naughty Dog never, no PlayStation never announces no news at 8 p.m. So that's how you know it's clearly like them, okay, this leaked again we have to you know answer this you don't you don't want to be answering to leaks you want to be you know in front of those type of things right and you got to realize this you the, the, when when the last of us was when this remake was announced right they announced it in response to it being leaked they put out a blog post and they put out a video about The Last of Us Part 1 remake in response to it being leaked. Now, they're putting out a video talking about the gameplay and features and a blog post talking about these things in response to it being leaked. Everything you've done in regarding to this remake, everything you've announced is in response to a leak. That looks bad. PlayStation keeps doing this thing lately where they are saving and waiting to drop material for who knows what special occasion. And I don't understand, like I said, that's the part I don't understand. This is a remake. This is not a brand new game. Why are you saving this type of video? And obviously, it's, it's even though I said it's reactionary, they didn't just make this video last night. When you look at the video, obviously, that video was made a while ago. So they could have easily dropped this at any time. So my thing is like, what are y'all waiting for? What 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 date were y'all waiting for to drop this type of video when you could see people's people questioning the, the remake, being unsure about the remake and how necessary it is? This is something you put out a month ago. Remember, it was at Jeff Keighley's Summer Game Fest, right, when they put out a blog post talking about factions, talking about the remake and all of, and, and some of the features why not put this put all this information out at that time or maybe a week even a week after this it just doesn't make any sense why you have that a blog post then about about the the announcement but then you have another blog post not a month late almost like more than a month later reiterating some of the same things but adding some things that you could have just said in the, the first time it makes no sense. It makes zero. You you could have said all of this then, and it would have it would have like answered all questions. But now you want to like feed drip information about a remake? That's the see. A lot of people are upset about the, the you know the remake and what it does doesn't have. Like I said, I'm down I'm down the middle with that. I was never expecting um, dodge and 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 prone. I was never expecting that to be in a remake. So that that's not what I'm upset about. 
is how how you're rolling out your game is stupid. How you're rolling out a remake is stupid. You every everything about Naughty Dog like for the past few years has been leaked. Like, bro, get ahead of this. It, it, it just just the way they're delivering information is just doesn't make any sense, bro. It's dumb. This is this is information, and I'm gonna talk about all the information they. They, they dropped and everything, and, and I guess I could watch the video also. I watched the video already, but I can um, put it up live. Bro, you could have been dropped this, and this this would have, this, a lot of people are looking at this now as, you know, as I, as I said, reactionary, and in response to the leaker, when there would have been no leak, because it looks, if you, because look, if you put this out, right, even though some people might have thought there was going to be more, they would have been more they would have been understanding at the time when it was announced and they wouldn't have felt like you were hiding something or even lying to them now they're looking at it like oh it's leaked and now you're trying to now you're trying to defend the fact that you didn't say all these things that you could have said before so the perception of the remake has has been like slighted now because just because you didn't put information out like it's it's so dumb it's so stupid bro so here we have the blog post they put out last night at uh 8 p.m eastern standard time um not gonna read all it i mean it's not much to read but pretty much what they pointed out in this um in this blog uh, for 4k um, native 4k at 30 fps dynamic 4k targeting targeting 60 I, I think they said that before um it's gonna have dual sense features we know that before 3d audio by the way 3d audio is one of the reasons why i'm really looking forward to uh playing this remake um because i have some arctis uh Ar what is it, steel series arctic arctic novo wireless pros amazing headsets um really want to try try those out with this um it's rebuilt from the ground up. They're reiterating that. Uh, it's They said it's not just a simple resolution um, bump or frame rate bump. They call it a complete overhaul. So that's the only part. And they say that right here. That's the only part where I'm like, y'all are, I think y'all are, you know, just exaggerating that just a, a tad bit. Okay. I believe that this game is built from the ground up. There's people even debating that. I'm like, I don't really see how you're debating the the game was built rebuilt from the ground up see my, my thing is like i can understand people thinking that this remake is not necessary or it's not is not as as much of a remake as it could be they could have done more but to say it's not a remake that doesn't make any sense to say it's not rebuilt that doesn't make any sense clearly it's both if you want to say it's not much of a remake as it should have been I come I will never, you know, debate with you about that. It's not if you wanted to if you want to say it's not a good remake, it's not a needed remake, no debate. But to say it's not rebuilt and it's not a remake, literally based on definition, that part doesn't make any sense. But for them to say it's a complete overhaul, I, I believe that they're pushing that a little bit. Because a complete overhaul to me, when you say that, you're not even you're not even using the same animations, which we've seen they're using some of the same animations. The animations are improved, they're cleaner, but they're still based on the foundation of previous animations. So when you say complete overall, I'm like, all right, bro, you, you gotta relax, tone it down a bit. That's the part where I'm like, pull it, pull it down, pull it back, bro. Relax, relax. That seems to be very responsive to, to what the leaker claims, right? Um, Okay, so uh, built from the ground up, they, denser physics. Um, it's not destruction or anything like that. It's just the environment, the objects in the environment will react to what's going on, which looks visually looks good. Obviously, not something that affects gameplay. Improved character animations. Like I said, I spoke on I spoke on the animations. The animations look slightly better yeah looks smoother more realistic but once again it's still based on what previous like mocap or whatever um improved ai for for allies and enemies which we're gonna see in the um in the video they added a permadeath mode speed run mode costumes um a bunch of uh you know 
stuff for uh, to for to make the game in inclusive. Some you know accessibility options. You know Naughty Dog love their accessibility options. Um, I think they they really do that for you know inclusivity points to look good to a certain audience. You know it's a little bit of virtue signaling. Not to say that they shouldn't do it, but you know. Um, they're gonna have this like audio description mode is like a narrator saying exactly what's happening now real quick I just want to like Just I, I can't believe in 2022 we're debating people are still debating what's a remake and what's a remaster Like I said, listen if you want to say this is not a good remake or not a uh, a remake that's living up to what the standards of to the standards of Resident Evil 2 or Final Fantasy 7 because people are using that as a standard of what a remake is now. I'm completely fine with you saying that. But there are people who are saying that this is not this is not even a re remake that it's a remaster. Literally based on the definition of a remake, like you you have to call it a remake, bro. You can't go back and 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 like revise history and suddenly call Last of Us Part 1 a, re a remaster just because you're not happy with the extent they're going to rebuild to, to you know rebuild the game. That part doesn't make any sense. You could be upset with something, but you can't literally change the definition of words and you can't change history. That's my problem. Like, okay, if, if you want if you want to say Last of Us is a is a re if, is not a remake and it's a remaster, then what is Shadow of the Colossus? What are what are the Crash games? What is like the Spyro collection? What is a bunch? Of, so you're saying the Last of Us remake is literally the same thing as 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 a bunch of of literal remasters, a bunch of literal HD upscaled games? That doesn't make any sense logically. Like I said, feel what you want to feel about the actual remake and the and the and the extent or lack of a, of extent that they went to make this remake, but you can't change the definition of a word, right? You know, put simply. What is the the big differ, differentiator of a remake and a remaster? A remake is built from the ground up. A remaster is when you literally go to the already existing game and you just put like a fresh coat of paint, increase the resolution, um, uh, uh, frame frame rate bump. That's that's it. That's it. One is rebuilding the house. They may use a, a few. Uh, you know, they may let a few pillars stand, may use a little bit of the foundation of the house that's already there, but they're rebuilding the house. A remake, a remaster is literally keeping the house the same and putting a coat of paint over. That's that's what it is. Once again, not debating if it's a good remake or a bad one. But the, but the literal, like, people want to come up with their own definitions doesn't make any sense. Because then, once again, you're, you're you know, rewriting history of what remakes and remasters were when the whole time when it comes to Shadow of Colossus or the Crash games or the Spyro games or a bunch of these other remakes or remasters, people always called them remakes and nobody, nobody debated it. Nobody refuted it. You know, like even with like Link's Awakening too. like nobody refuted whether these were remakes or remasters. We, we called them that right now. Suddenly people want to act like they're like they were, you know, um, just so much more enlightened than everybody else. Two years, you know, uh, the years before Resident Evil 2 or Final Fantasy, and they want to act like, oh, no, I, I was always calling uh, those games that that everybody considered remakes to be, you know, as re I always considered those remakes remasters. No, you didn't. You call those game games remakes just like everybody else, because that's what they were established as, because they were rebuilt from the ground up. Everybody called them remake and nobody debated it. So don't go back now and act like you were just you know, this this wise, you know, person with foresight to know that, you know, you're you're now you're going back to, to change history to prove your point. You can't do that, right? Just just admit you called it a remake and now your and now your standards for what a remake is has changed. That's fine. If you want to say remakes should not just be one to one and they should add mechanics and improve a lot more, that's fine. But to go back in history and once again change what is and what was accepted, you look stupid. It doesn't make any sense. Just say you have a new standard for what remakes are. Because you gotta remember, at a certain point, when remakes were like a, a, a somewhat newer and hot thing, one of the main things gamers and fans said was don't change my game. 
I want the exact same one-to-one -one faithful game. That's what that's what fans said. Remember, and and if and if you did anything else, if you changed anything, they would come after you with pitchforks and knives. Now, in in the wake of games like Resident Evil 2, once again, and Final Fantasy VII Remake, now gamers have opened their minds and just been open to a lot more changes and be like, you know what? I'm okay with my game, you know, with a remake of my game having a lot more changes and a lot of liberties uh, being taken with them. Really just reimaginings. That's what they, you know, or, you know, real reboots and reimaginings. That's what they are. Gamers just became that way. Just started to accept that. And they acting like, oh, yeah, yeah, I've always wanted my games to be completely overhauled. No, you didn't. I've been on this website a long time. I remember developers were terrified to change anything in a remake because gamers would literally destroy them for it. That's a fact. So let's look at this. Um, now that we've clearly established what a remake and a remaster is, uh, let's look at this trailer, right? I don't even know if I got my sound on. Because I just, I don't, I don't want to watch the whole trailer, but I want to... Um, point out a few things let's see do i have it more than two years ago when we were finishing okay. last of us part two and we we're working on those flashbacks within that scene for the first game we got excited with the idea of like oh man what if we made the last of us part one to look as good if not better than what we have done with last of us part two which we're but did you really get excited about that idea because wasn't the story that uh the dudes from sony Bend and um, that other Sony support studio, the ones that came up with this idea and wanted to work on it, and then you took over. Isn't that the story? How the story goes? He's kind of talking like this was all their idea. I we I don't know the real story. Maybe we'll find out. We really pushed the boundaries. If we do that, we've been constrained by technology. The original. Okay, I'm, I'm fast forwarding to through some stuff. Us, I think in a lot of ways. We'll Tech. They, they talk about how like the last of us you know the, the ps5 allows them to uh really do all the things they would have wanted you know on the ps3 version and all that stuff the ps5 it's like an open box of, of tools and goodies that we can play from and draw from the 4k hd let me see if i can put VR, this in 4k improved haptics 60 frames help us to reimagine the last of us It gave us opportunities to rebuild our characters at the highest fidelity. Not only are the characters more detailed, I mean down to the, the irises and the pupil depth. You know, you fall into the eyes of the characters. Aside from that, the facial animation is just way more believable. Like all the nuances, all the little subtle reactions, glances, glares. So no matter what you and things do look better like glue like glue like glue got it good good we are able some of the characters look you know as we've seen look a little bit funky like i think um tommy looks like chris pratt but we saw uh sam and henry their character models look look you know much better th this time around so i'm happy about that change and you know, the other facial animations are better now to not only just have it's the same character so now from seamless transition I'm skipping. Oh, yeah. So there's seamless transitions in gameplay now. From gameplay to cutscene is like more seamless transitions now. happen in to keep you. Let's go. Fast forwarding. We don't need to watch this One whole thing. The things that the PlayStation 5 is really enabling is that we're able to have a density of physics objects in a scene that we just we could never do before. Like this has always been <laughs> the dream is to have this number of bumpables, chippables, breakables, destructible objects in a scene. It just makes the world feel rich, it makes it feel lived in. Materials kind of have the properties that you'd expect. The turret truck in, in Pittsburgh, when it's firing at you and it's just ripping apart the concrete and sending objects flying left and right. Seeing things break, like there's fear, there's a real fear that it invokes. And it's giving us a much more... So th those things are, are good, you know, um, obviously it doesn't affect gameplay, it's just for the, the atmosphere and the immersion of the game, so I'm not, I'm not mad at that. Um, it's not like a huge thing, but why not, you know? It's for immersion purposes. And this is where they talk about the AI being improved. You know, you can see their code and all that stuff. Our AI tech has just increased incredibly. 
And he does confirm that this is AI uh, tech based on The Last of Us Part 2. What we were building the basis off of was The Last of Us Part 2's AI. And it has sophisticated systems for things like the fundamental knowledge model of how these NPCs perceive and understand what the player is, is much more sophisticated. Now how the enemies are communicating with each other, how they're chasing you, how they're flanking you, how intense that fight feels, it's so much more rewarding coming out of it from the other side. Understanding of like, okay, this is where the enemies can see their exposure. We not only have exposure, we have future exposure. So buddies can know, okay, that enemy is walking forward and they're about to round this corner. So in three seconds, that corner is going to be exposed. So I'd better move now to avoid this enemy seeing me. This really lets the buddies make very complex uh, decisions and maintain that, that feeling of stealth much more believably. So as we know, in the, la in the original Last of Us game, the AI was pretty dumb, both enemy, both ally and enemy. Um, sometimes allies would run right in front of uh, the enemies. I don't think like that's never going to happen. It's going to happen, bro. Like no AI system is perfect. It's going to happen even in this remake. But the frequency of it is I, I, I expect it to be very minimal. That's what I expect. Is that basically using We're gonna keep going yeah 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 first we just had to build that core experience and then beyond that we wanted to add uh, several features that fans have been asking yeah gameplay modifiers and stuff permadeath of yeah. gamers or of unlockables so there's all unlockables and costumes and stuff single. yeah accessibility I'm options him, which now has Everything from Ooh. these expanded environments, and the breath of intention, and then I think the haptics, the 3D audio, the fast loading. Yeah, they talk about the dual sense features. Having that two part. Like I said, I can't wait to uh, use my headphones with these. Bit of resistance, and then adaptive I, triggers. I think is one of the ways that the dual sync is I think one of. The, this wasn't I, in I is that. I don't even know what you exactly what's the official name for that, but um, when you uh, injure an enemy to the point where they can't do anything and um, they are like on their last stand um, mode, I guess, where you could like finish them off. I can't remember if that was in The Last of Us Part One in the original. I feel like it was in the trailer, and I think I might have encountered it. It was rare. I think it, it was in the game, but it was extremely rare to actually come across it. But I do think it was in it was in the original game. It just didn't happen that often. Um, but it was in the original game. They probably increased the frequency now at, at where you will encounter it. One of the ways that the DualSense really advances sophisticated about that on the DualSense is that in effect has a little like speaker in it. <laughs> and it this looks like a good spot. I really like these uh, you know this to these the animations up at the workbench. So if you're seeing Joel taking apart a gun or screwing something in. This is very much a stock on a gun. Like how it looked in uh, part two. That on, you're going to get that haptic feedback on that. We have, you know, haptics all across the board, you know, for all the moments you kind of expect for clambering, jumping, landing, then to pet the giraffe. And, and that's what uh, the There's good old giraffe scene. Everybody open. seems to lose their mind about. So yeah. Um, that's that's really uh everything so like i said um people have to decide if the things that they've included is worth it to them at 70 dollars. the game is gonna go gonna have a price drop within a month it's gonna go to like 50 dollars within a month so um people who don't think it's worth it price drop within a month um that does seem to be a lot of people's problems based on the comment section but once again People say that's the that's their issue, but when you look at like game sales and like people buying games at seventy dollars, hey man, the numbers don't lie. People are doing it and doing it in droves. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We we will see. Like I said, I'm still playing it, but Jack Move is my share play partner, so I was gonna play it anyway because he already bought it. He feels he got swindled, but uh, I'm gonna enjoy the game um, based off of his his dime. So. Uh, 
Yeah, man. Let me know what y'all think about this. I like I said, I think the biggest problem to me is not the remake. It's not the price thing for me. You know, I this is what I expected. You know, and I didn't expect them to do the most. I don't. There's no. There's nothing for me to point at. There's no precedent in history when it comes to like once again people are looking at Resident Evil and um, Final Fantasy VII as the rule but those games are the exceptions so those are the new exceptions when you look at the precedent of what remakes are they're usually just rebuilt with the same mechanics remakes typically don't do the most and include a bunch of new mechanics and gameplay options and stuff like that so just i'm saying just based off of that that's why my expectations were just average for this People that expected them to really go out the window. I don't know why y'all, ex- I'm gonna be real. I don't know why y'all expected that from like even, especially from like a PlayStation studio. PlayStation does, PlayStation studios do great things, but they don't really go above and beyond, you know, when it, when it comes to like these type of endeavors, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like when it comes to like in, in, a, in a remake of a game, I, w- I wouldn't expect the PlayStation Studio to go above and beyond what they really need to. When it comes to developing their games, you know, I think they do that, but not when it comes to like something like this. PlayStation is kind of known in some aspects outside of actual game development, new game development. PlayStation is kind of known for doing the bare minimum. So I kind of expected that from them. Um, so it didn't shock me. My My issue, once again, is how they roll out their games and not controlling leaks and uh just just making stupid decisions on on keeping withholding information but let me know what y'all think about this uh hit the like button follow me on twitter um all that good stuff and uh yeah i'm out of here peace